I'm Jerry Baker, America's Master Gardener. I'd like to invite you to another supercharged, power-packed lawn and garden special. This one featuring year-round tree, shrub, and evergreen care. Now, if you sip lemonade in the shade of trees or sought the relief by walking through trees, if you've done either one of them, then you know the importance of trees, shrubs, and evergreens. Now, you might take trees for granted unless you live in a new house with a bare lot. And if you're smart, you won't go out and buy the cheapest tree that you can get your hands on. Now, we're going to look at tree, shrubs, and evergreens up close and personal, step by step through the growing year. Plants, like people, need breakfast of champions, hygiene, proper snacks, and regular haircuts. Now, we got a lot of ground to cover, literally, so let's get growing. In the spring of the year, you want to clean up underneath your trees. I mean, really get them clean. You know, most people take their trees and shrubs for granted. They figure, well, they're, they're big enough, they can take care of themselves, and they don't feed them, they don't worry about the soil underneath. And then they wonder why they have problems. First of all, you want to clean this up and get that debris out because that's the hiding place for insects and diseases. I mean, big time. Once that's out of there, then you turn your attention to your shrubs and you do a very light pruning. When I say light pruning, it's only if there's something broken something injured or something dead and then you will cut that out but we'll do an extensive pruning job a little later on i'll show you how then the next thing you do is clean up your your trees your shrubs and your evergreens give them a jump start get them clean let them start the season on level ground and there you're going to use a, a one cup of antiseptic mouthwash remember antiseptic mouthwash are bacteria stats and they help to control the growth and build up of diseases before there's any trouble at all on both tree shrubs and evergreens. One cup of liquid dish soap, and it can be any liquid dish soap, and that's to wash off the dirt, dust, pollution, egg masses, uh, most diseases, it will discourage them and soften them up. So if you need any medication, it'll take care of them. One cup of chewing tobacco juice. And the way you make chewing tobacco juice is you take your thumb and three fingers, you reach in and you get a big clutch like that. You put that inside of the toe of a nylon stocking, put it in a pint of boiling hot water. If you're into gardening like I am, you put the whole package in the nylon stocking, put it in a gallon of water, then you've got enough chewing tobacco juice to last you probably for the whole season. And that's one cup of chewing tobacco juice. That goes in your 20 gallon hose end sprayer. And then you will spray all of your tree shrubs and evergreens in order to get them off to a good clean start. Now you're gonna say, I can't reach up high enough with my spray, with a 20 gallon sprayer like that. Well, you may not with that one, but you can get a head like this in any garden center that will throw it up 35 feet if you have normal pressure. But I want you to attach it to your hose, and then I want you to wash it down to the point of runoff. And when I say runoff, that's on all of the trees, the shrubs and the evergreens and the trunks of trees as far up as you can get them to the point of runoff and runoff means exactly that go all the way around the tree that way you'll know that they start out clean and mean I'm not looking for Easter eggs, I'm looking for bug eggs. First thing you do when you come out in the spring of the year, on a nice bright sunny day when it's starting to warm up and everybody's out mowing and sowing and planting and doing everything, you pay attention to your trees and your shrubs, your dormant trees and shrubs. And dormant means that no foliage has come out, the buds have just started to swell up. You're concerned with overwintering insects that got an appetite that would probably put a bear to shame and diseases that are getting ready to, to bust loose and incubate. You have to dormant spray. But before you dormant spray, I want you to wash all of your trees and shrubs down with one cup of liquid dish soap into your 20 gallon hose end sprayer and wash them down to the point of runoff. I mean, make sure you get into all the cracks and crevices. You can't wash them too good. Now, you might do this just before you go to lunch because the earlier you do it in the day the better and always on a day when there's no freezing 
Now, if you've got big trees to do instead of small trees to do, then what I want you to do is use a tree and shrub sprayer. This differs from your ordinary small sprayer in that the snout will let you push it up 35, maybe 40 feet. This is an adjustable sprayer head that you can turn just like the rest of them, tip it up and down, and this will be used for both the sprays. You use two kinds of sprays. You use a, a dormant oil, which kills overwintering insects in mass. That's what you want to do. That's for insects. For the diseases, then you will use lime sulfur solution, and those can be combined, and the instructions will be on it, or you can use them singly, one at a time. And that's when you come ahead and overspray again. You start at the ground, you work up the tree, you spray all around it so that, there's, that you haven't missed a spot, and then you're ready to go ahead with all of your other programs. And that will be your spring feeding and, and spring pruning, any pruning that you have to do in damage. But it is absolutely necessary in the spring and the fall, and especially in the spring, that you dormant spray. Breakfast is my favorite meal. It's also the most important meal that I will eat, according to nutritionists and doctors, and to any nurseryman, it is the most important meal that your trees, shrubs, and evergreens are going to have to have. And the reason is because they're going to have to go through an, the entire growing season with the first application of fertilizer. You can't just take and sprinkle lightly fertilizer under a big tree or around shrubs. You've got to concentrate on what you're doing, when you're doing it. I'm totally opposed to fall feeding of plants. And the reason is because when you feed them in the fall, even though the growing season is the same, that is the cool, uh, the cool evenings and the warm days, and it stimulates growth. And when it does it in the fall, your jack frost comes along and just wipes it out. So spring is the most important feeding you'll do. And most of you, by the way, do not feed properly. I don't care. It's kind of a hit and a miss. You worry about the lawn. You don't worry about, about the tree, shrubs, and evergreens. Get 25 pounds of any garden food at all. Mix it in a bucket. That will be your NPK and your trace elements. To that, you're going to add one pound of ordinary sugar. Sugar is what plants manufacture for chlorophyll. That's what they live on. That's their energy food. Not only does it, does it do that, but it also it lets the plant live off of it because it's, uh, they manufacture the sugar, so it's sort of putting them on an IV till they get the growing season going. So now I've got 25 pounds of fertilizer, I got one pound of sugar, and I got a half a pound of Epsom salt. Epsom salt, again, is one of the most important elements because it's magnesium sulfate, deepens the color, thickens the petals, and increases root structure. I now take all of that and I mix it up together. And no, you don't put cream and sugar on it. They don't eat cream and sugar. And then I will pour this into my broadcast spreader because I'm going to do two things. I'm going to deep feed as well as surface feed. Now, deep feeding means I use a drill with a tree auger in it. And when I'm going to feed a tree, and tree, this is important, trees don't eat up at the trunk. That'd be like you sticking food in your ear, folks. I guarantee you'd lose weight. Well, they lose weight when you feed up there. What you're going to do is go out to the tip of the, the farthest branch. That's called the weep line. And you're going to drill holes 8 to 10 inches deep. 8 to 10 inches deep, 18 inches apart, in two rows around the tree. Now, into each of these holes, you're going to put two tablespoons of the food mixture that we mixed up, which is the pound of sugar, the half a pound of Epsom salts, and 25 pounds of fertilizer. And when you do it, make sure that you pour it, the, the two tablespoons into the hole, kick the soil over the top when you're done, and pat them down. And then what you do is come back in and you spread over the top for two reasons. First of all, for the surface roots that are up there, 
but also so that you don't have a bunch of green spots all around. Into your shrubs, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to, on big ones, you, you drill holes out around them, fill them with the two tablespoons, and then surface feed them. Now, with, in addition to what you're feeding here, you want to remember that every three weeks you're using the green up tonic, every two weeks you are feeding them with the, the you're uh, washing them down with the clean up tonic. Between the feeding and the cleaning, the spring feeding, you're going to have the happiest trees in the whole wide world in your yard. And you're going to be happy because you have just protected your investment. You will see what true, what true tree growth, shrub growth and performance really is. Feed them at the right time in the right way. snack. So does your trees, your shrubs, and your evergreens because they're going to work hard. Last week we dry, we dry fed, put fertilizer in the ground underneath it. Now we're going to make it pop. And the way to do that is to mix my tonic. And that's to use a can of beer. That's your enzyme activator. That's what makes the tonic really begin to work because it wakes up all the bacteria in the soil releases all of the other elements that Mother Nature has put there. One can of cola. That's the sugar. Plants like sweet snacks because that they live off of sugar and it also triggers again all of the nitrogen that's in the soil. One cup of ordinary liquid lawn food. Any kind will do. That's the NPKs. That's their vitamins. A half a cup of ammonia. Now here's the important stuff right here. Because the ammonia is nitrogen. It's thunderstorm in a bottle. They take this food up right away and it doesn't interfere with their regular meals. Which you're picking up. It's just a quick starter. And a half a cup of liquid dish soap. That softens the soil up so that it gets down. Also softens up the fertilizer that you put down so that it can be released and ingested and digested much easier. Now fill your hose and sprayer up. And now you will attach it to the garden hose and you will spray all of the surfaces under all of the trees, the shrubs, and the evergreens. And then you will also overspray the foliage to the point of runoff. Now make sure that you do all of the soil, again, so that it softens up the dry fertilizer and gets down the holes we dug. Now you overspray to the point of runoff on the soil underneath. And now these things will jump up and begin to rare and to grow, and that's what we need. Rare and to grow evergreens, trees, and shrubs. Are you bugged by bugs? Well, if you are, what you have just seen is the best natural insect control you can possibly find. It's the birds. Invite the birds to live in your yard. Your trees, your shrubs, and your evergreens love them because they, they take all of the bugs off them and nesting in them and flying in them and it's all sorts of things. So make sure that you encourage them to come around. Then the other thing is keep your trees and your shrubs and your evergreens clean. And I've showed you that many times. If you have a problem and they're insects and they're flying insects, insects above the ground, then you're going to use one medication. If they're underground or on the surface of the ground, that's another medication, but you use the same basic solution. You will mix together a half a cup of liquid dish soap. Soap in itself discourages insects in that it softens up their own shell and their own apparatus, and they literally have trouble flying. Yet also, they don't like the taste of it, and the next thing we're going to put in is a half a cup of antiseptic mouthwash. The antiseptic mouthwash messes up the sex life of diseases, so no hanky-panky is going on. And a half a cup of chewing tobacco juice. Chewing tobacco juice is ingestion poison and contact poison. and takes care of just about any insect that comes around, or at least makes him sick enough that he's not coming back to your house. Now, if it's 
a flying insect, insects above the ground, then I want you to use a fruit tree spray, and I want you to use it at half the recommended rate. Fruit tree spray contains malathion, methoxychlor, captan, and seven. It has the basic, three basic insect controls for both soil and flying insects, and it has a fungicide. If they're crawling insects, then in the same solution, you will use either diazonon or durisban at 50% of the recommended rate into the hose end sprayer. If you're using a soil insect control, then you begin at the soil and you cover all the way around it and about halfway up the trunk. If, it's, if you're using a fruit tree spray, then you're going to go ahead and spray from the top down and then the bottom up. If you want to stop the creepy crawlies, crawlers like gypsy moths and like army tent caterpillars, then take and put a piece of burlap around the tree and you can buy burlap in rolls at any garden center. And then a pest barrier. Pest barrier is a, is a tacky, sticky, nasty stuff. Comes in tubes like a toothpaste. And what you do is you put that all the way around the tree. Wrap them, then, then wrap this over. Just wrap it off like this. And now the insects, as they crawl up, they'll crawl up underneath there to hide and they'll stick. If you, if you do the right spray, use the tacky substance to trap them, then you'll be just fine. And then spray your, your plants from the top down, if it's foliage, and the bottom around. One of the most important aspects of gardening, especially tree shrubs and evergreens, are mulch. And mulch is, uh, mulch is a protection, it's a decorative uh, collar, um, it's a, an easy way to take heat off of a building. That is, when the heat comes back off of a wall and hits against the, the, the mulch, the mulch is cool and damp and it takes the heat and sucks it in so that when it rolls back up it doesn't kill shrubs. There are several different kinds of mulch material. This is shredded bark. No matter what kind of bark you put down, I want you to put shredded bark down first, especially if there's stone underneath it. Or you can, you can use pine bark. And pine bark, this is pine bark. All of these things are available in garden centers. Usually they've got these big bargain sales from gas stations to everything else. And most of the stuff comes from the same place, so get that, pine bark. You can use leaves, but make sure that the kind of leaves you do, if they're an acid leaf, if they're oak or an ant from an acid plant, they will go underneath a plant that likes acidity. You can use sawdust, but you don't want to use too much sawdust. Sawdust can be used as both a soil conditioner and can be used um, as a mulch. And if you're going to do that, again, it will be around plants that want acidity, rhododendrons, and you can work it into the soil a little bit. Now, once you've got that down, then it's the way to do it. And for instance, you would put on the shredded bark, would go down first. And then say I wanted it to be decorative. I would spread it. I do not put it right up against the tree. I always leave a little room so that when I have to water and have to spray, that the sprays can get in behind it. And then I would take my pine bark and put it over the top. Now, if this was stone, if these were brick chips or they were, they were big boulders, then they're going to go right over the top of this because then the shredded bark is going to take the heat away from the stone. Because the heat's here, it'll take it away from it so that it won't come back up. And let's say it was an evergreen or a shrub and it would burn it. Mulch is probably one of the best friends that your yard will ever have. Make sure you use the right mulch in the right way to protect not to hinder your trees, shrubs, and evergreens. Bright, sunny, hot day. My goodness gracious, be uncomfortable out here. And I get some 
sunburn. You got to do the same thing to your plants. First of all, when you go out in the garden, take care of yourself. Wear a hat so you don't hurt yourself and you get sun, you know, sun, sun, whatever you're doing, you fall over, wear your sunglasses so you don't burn your eyes and put protection on your skin so your skin is protected. You have to do the same thing to plants. You say, how are you going to put sun, suntan lotion on your plants? They're called anti-desiccants. Anti-desiccants are a polymer material, all, sort of a plastic material, but what they do is they let the plant breathe and they hold moisture into the leaves. They protect the, from the sun coming against them and scalding them, and they wash off pollution. They wash. Uh, they protect against sun, uh, against salt damage, road damage, and everything else. They're available in garden centers everywhere. You can use them on house plants, tree shrubs, and even your Christmas tree. Keep the needles where they belong. Whether it's weatherproof, wiltproof, or anything else, you want to put an anti-desiccant on. Simply take this material, pour it into your sprayer. Uh, it, in your six gallon sprayer, it covers 9,000 square feet. You do not have to dissolve it. You put it in to the sprayer, then you hook the hose onto it and you spray from the top down, folks. When you spray, you want to make sure that you've got full coverage. And so you spray from the top down, all of them. Then you, you turn it off, you turn the nozzle up and you come from the bottom up. You stop, you turn the deflector to the side, so you go to the side, you turn it to the other side, and you cut it to the point of runoff. If you do this in the spring of the year before the hot weather comes on, in the fall of the year before you get your freeze, your plants will be protected all year long and you will be tickled pink and so will the plants. Well, that about wraps it up for spring care of trees, shrubs, and evergreens. It was a little work, but it was worth it. And now that the hard work is over, summer is just around the corner. You can sit back and relax and enjoy. And the only thing you got to worry about is feeding them and keeping them clean. But we've still got quite a bit of work for fall, so you come on, and I'm going to show you what you got to do. You fed your tree shrubs and evergreens a real heavy meal in the, in the spring of the year. You know, you used the fertilizer and the Epsom salts and the sugar. And then you fed them a snack tonic along the way. Now it's time to settle down and put them on the summer diet. Keep it light so they don't gain, gain a lot of weight. They're just comfortable. And that formula is to, is to mix together a can of beer. And again, it can, it can be light beer or dark beer. I don't care what kind of beer it is, flat beer. If you can get those uh, at the, down at the beer store, tell them you'll take any of those tanks that they wash out flat. One can of beer. I want you to put one cup of ammonia. Ammonia is the nitrogen. This is a foliar feeding. This means that the plants literally take it through the surface of their leaves. The beer is the thing that wakes up and makes everything begin to operate. I want you to put in a half a cup of clear corn syrup. And corn syrup, that's the sugar that makes it function Plants eat sugar, they like it, it's kind of like a lemonade to them, it's like a cake. A half a cup of liquid dish soap. Soap softens up the soil, washes off pollution, and in the summertime they need pollution washed off. And also it keeps them bright and sparkly and the water just seems to stick to it and work good. And they need a one a day vitamin, that's what lawn food is. Any lawn food, and that's a half a cup, and it has the trace elements so, so that they don't get to, that they, their, their body doesn't get weak or anything. That's all mixed together, stirred up real good, put into your hose and sprayer, and then you're going to feed everything in sight, trees, shrubs, evergreens. You're even going to get the lawn and the flowers. Don't just, um, don't spoil just one group because the other group will get mad. So if you want the meanest, the greenest, cleanest, prettiest, healthiest tree, shrubs, and evergreens on your side of the fence, Feed them the all-purpose tonic. Feed them before noon every three weeks.
Heat the heat, keep cool. That's the word for you and I. It's also the words for the bugs because that's where they go. They go where it's cool and dark and nice and comfortable. That's inside your shrubs and your evergreens. So what you want to do is discourage them from going in there and then you want to keep them out. And that's done by using the cleanup tonic every two weeks. The cleanup tonic consists of one cup of antiseptic mouthwash. Antiseptic mouthwash discourages the diseases from going in. No hanky-panky going on. One cup of chewing tobacco juice, that discourages the bugs from ever coming back because it's an ingestion poison, a contact poison. One cup of liquid dish soap, and the liquid dish soap washes the pollution off so that it's clean and happy and comfortable and discourages the bugs from coming around because it softens up their hides. If you're going to use, if you have to use an insect control, you will use it inside of this solution. If it's for flying insects, you will use a fruit tree spray at 50% of the recommended rate. If it's for soil insects, then you will use a Durasban, a soil insect control. Make sure that you saturate the plants every two weeks after seven o'clock at night, both the soil and the plant, depending on where the insects are a problem, and they won't bug either one of you. Feels good on a hot summer day. That's what my friend is saying up there. Watering, it's probably one of the most important jobs you have to do for the summer and the one that's taken the lightest. Don't do that. It's so important to a tree and a shrubs and evergreens to get proper watering. And just turning your sprinkler system on or putting a, a little wand sprinkler, that's not gonna put water down. They drink a lot of water. It takes a lot of water to get up all the way in these trees and with foliage like this. And did just a hit and a miss, like this is not watering. I see people watering like this on shrubs. That's not watering. You get it down and you let it soak. It's a good idea to go ahead and if you uh, your shrubs and just kind of if you're going to deep water and you deep water so that the roots go deep because if you shallow water, what it does is it encourages the roots to come up shallow because it dries out so fast. So you really got to get it down there. So just just leave it lay down in there. I told you there weren't going to be a lot of work in the summertime once you got it all taken care of in the spring of the year. All you have to do is feed every three weeks with my all-purpose green up tonic, wash them down and keep them clean with my all-purpose clean tonic, and occasionally deep water so that you ensure deep root growth. If you do that, they're going to be the healthiest thing there are. So as easy as it is. Now we got quite a few jobs to do in the fall, so come on, I'll show you what you got to do. <music> Bet you wonder what I'm doing walking around with spiked shoes on when we're talking about tree shrubs and evergreens. Well, what I'm doing is penetrating and aerating the soil underneath all of my trees, around my shrubs and evergreens, on the lawn, around all the flowers and everything else in the fall of the year so that all of the medications or any of the solutions that I'm going to use will penetrate and get down where they belong. I'm wearing uh, aerator sandals, two and a half inch steel spikes that penetrate deep into the soil that carry all of the solutions that I want down inside. They are not difficult to wear, folks. I am not a spring chicken. I wear them all the time. It's heel toe. When you use them, walk heel toe. You can follow your lawnmower. But whatever you do, wear aerator sandals or penetrate with a stick with a nail in it or something, but get it down. Because the first thing we're going to use uh, that we have to penetrate with is one cup of liquid dish soap, adding Durasban, the most popular chemical for soil insect control, at the recommended rate into my hose end sprayer and I'm going to spray underneath all of my trees, my shrubs, my evergreens, and every place else that I've got to, I make sure that I get in, really inside, on the outside, go up inside of them, and I walk in there. When I do any work around the trees and the shrubs later in the fall, I wanna make sure that I've done enough penetration to make sure that the medications get down where they belong. That way I know that my trees, shrubs, and evergreens, and all the rest of the plants in my garden are gonna be safe for the rest of the winter.
as a rule, we don't feed trees, shrubs, and evergreens in the fall of the year. And the reason we don't do that is because it stimulates late growth, late growth that is just going to get wiped out by jack frost. What you do is you always feed between, before August the 15th. There are a couple of other things that you have to do in order to protect your plants, but also so that when they go to bed, they're going to go to bed with their tummies full and they're going to be able to sleep and be comfortable for the rest of the winter. What I want you to do is mix five pounds of bone meal. Bone meal takes 90 days under normal weather just to break down so the plants can eat it. And one pound of Epsom salts are mixed together and then applied at a number two on the broadcast spreader around, in, and among all trees, shrubs, and evergreens. The Epsom salts deepens the color, thickens the petals, and increases root structure. And put it on a, put it on a number two opening and stay close to the ground. And it's, not, it's nothing really heavy that you have to put in. You just want to put down a little bit of that. Now, that won't stimulate growth. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to protect the trees from varmints in the shrubs so that they don't come, the mice, for instance, don't come up and gnaw at the bark on young trees. Or the borers, come, when they come out of the soil and go back down, I'm going to get them. And here I'm going to put about a half a container of paradichlorobenzene moth crystals and a half a pound of Epsom salts and mix that together and just put a few crystals, a mixture of a few crystals of that up close to the bark of the tree. Mix it up really good and put it in and just put it around close by and around the same way with shrubs. Just put it in among the shrubs. You can just throw it in among the shrubs. Now the last feeding that you're going to give is going to be a tonic feeding. And I'm going to mix one can of beer. And the beer again will wake up or it will stimulate the uh, enzymes that are trying to go to sleep. And I don't want that to happen. I want everything to be perking yet because it's a nice, warm, comfortable fall day. And don't wait for a storm, folks. Don't wait until it's cold and everything's blowing. Oh, I want a half a cup. I get carried away here. A half a cup of uh, soap. Let's make it a whole cup at this time of year. And fill up the balance of your sprayer with ammonia. Now attach your hose and go out and feed all of your trees, shrubs, and evergreens. Again, the reason we're going to do this is so that they're well protected, well fed, and they're ready to wake up and get growing next year. winter's on its way and your tree shrubs and evergreens are worried that you're not going to take proper care of them. Now is the time. The fall of the year, get them prepared. Now in the spring of the year I took you through all the steps that we're going to go through now and only now we're going to turn around and we're going to reverse it. And the first thing you're going to do is mix and wash down everything with, with the uh, with the all-purpose cleanup tonic. And that's one cup of antiseptic mouthwash. That discourages the diseases from setting up and, and overwintering with us. One cup of liquid dish soap. That washes off all of the pollution that's built up, washes off any of the salt. For those of you who live around um, the ocean areas or where the breeze is coming in, one cup of chewing tobacco juice. Chewing tobacco juice is an insect control. Uh, it's a contact poison and ingestion poison. That is sprayed on, wash down everything. I mean, as high as you can get, as much as you can get, wash them down so that they're clean. The next thing that we're going to do is dormant spray. Dormant spraying is uh, to kill overwintering insects. Come wintertime, they hibernate too. And so I want, to kill over, I want to kill any of them that overwinter. And so that's done with a dormant spray, which is a dormant oil. It's a very light oil that is applied through a hose end sprayer. If you're trying to get up into high trees, then use a tree and shrub sprayer head that will let you go up to 35 feet. When you dormant spray, make sure that you dormant spray all woody cane plants. After we do that, then we water well. I need as much water on the end of the soil underneath tree shrubs and evergreens as I can get until the ground freezes solid. And the reason is so that come the, the warm days of winter, when they thaw out, there's water to come up to keep from getting bark split. Mulch. I've talked about mulch. I want mulch put underneath the, the trees and around the shrubs and evergreens to conserve that moisture so the moisture doesn't get out 
and then I've got trees going, oh, 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 where's the water? An anti-desiccant. Anti-desiccant is an insurance policy over the long lives of your tree shrubs and evergreens because what it does is it locks out all of the elements and locks in moisture and it keeps from winter burn, it keeps from summer burn, but right now we don't want winter kill. So we use an anti-desiccant that's applied from your hose end sprayer. A quart will cover 9,000 square feet. Last but not least is to protect your plants against wind and that will be done with burlap and you can buy burlap in rolls of varying uh, lengths and varying widths. When you do, you drive stakes into the front of your shrubs and your evergreens and uh, then put the burlap around it and staple it. Young trees, especially young new trees or trees that have been sick, you'll use a tree wrap on it. Wrap them from the ground up to the top, tie them with pieces of nylon stocking. Do not use string or wire. Nylon lets it expand. That way your trees, your shrubs, and your evergreens will be protected for the upcoming winter and will get into winter care in just very shortly. But that preps them to get them ready so they know you really care. You know, winter chores in your garden continue. There aren't many of them, but they continue. You, you're in the house and you're all comfortable and cozy and up where the snow is running, you got all the fire in the fireplace. And down in the south, occasionally you hear, all of a sudden, you hear there's gonna be a freeze or a frost. Well, the thing is to be on guard in your garden. Okay, in the northern and the colder parts of the country, it's a good idea, number one, to make sure that you don't throw snow that has melting and thawing uh, things where salt has been one of the additives. That's the worst thing in the world to do. And also to throw snow up onto the branches because the weights will break them off. Another thing is I want you to always check when you're out and you're walking around the yard or you're coming in from the garage and going out and everything, take a look at the evergreens and shrubs. Don't be afraid to go over and shake the limbs if they got a lot of snow on them. Don't use a broom and beat on them. If anything is broken, I want you to take and cut it off as close as you can to the wood. The limb is broken, cut it off, and then either seal it with a prune, with an ordinary pruning paint, or you can use a late, an interior latex paint. If you've got a little green and blue, you mix them together, you've got brown. Antiseptic mouthwash. If there's any injury, the first thing that you might want to do is may take a ring around the collar bottle and put about, oh, a shot glass into a quart and just two or three drops of liquid dish soap and to spray the wound, that way you'll, you'll take care of it. If there's any infection that was gonna be around there, it won't, and then go ahead and seal it. Where we have a problem south of the Mason-Dixon line with a uh, frost warning coming in, you can get, it's called floating row, uh, row crop paper. And what it is, is it's a fiber that floats on top of plants. Well, in this case, we can put it over the top of our real tender ones, and it will take care of up to 26 degrees and it holds the heat down underneath it. No matter what it is that you have to do to your plants, make sure you do, make sure you keep them snug. And another thing is old nylons. Keep them on your wrist. I keep a wristband full of them. And I use these and I'll tie, tie them together. And if I've got a shrub that's opening up or there's gonna be a snowstorm, I'll take and put a whole nylon stocking around it, tie it up just snugly, not real tight, just snugly, so that the snow won't open it up and break it off but keep your eye on your tree shrubs and evergreens in the winter so that they're bloomers and foliagers next spring and don't end up as firewood in the fireplace to balance the winter. Well, this wraps up our little visit in amongst the trees, shrubs, and evergreens. I hope you've enjoyed the time together and learned a thing or two about how to care for our most valuable plants in the landscape. Life without them would be pretty darn dull. Don't ignore them. Treat them like children. Give them sunshine, fresh air, a balanced diet, regular beds, and a little TLC. If you do, they'll thrive and reward you for years of comfort and beauty around your house. So, till the next time, I'm Jerry Baker, America's Master Gardener, wishing you good luck and good gardening.